Hey, I don't know if you've noticed, but just like in bad movies where the unpopular girl ditches the glasses and the ponytail and immediately becomes a smoke show, 150 RPM scout rifles, Jade Rabbit in particular, have gotten a major glow up and have become wildly popular. Hi, my name is Fallout. Do me a favor, would you? Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to help me achieve my humble goal of taking over the world. Thank you. Today, we're talking about scout rifles, mainly the Jade Rabbit. Recently, the gun has become omega popular, and while doing a deep dive into the weapon, I learned not only that it's really good, but also broken. Not broken as in super OP, crushes everything else beneath it. I mean, the exotic perk is actually literally f broken, but more on that in a minute. I'll show you what I found on Jade Rabbit, and we'll also quickly talk about a few other sleeper scout rifles that actually compare pretty well to the new Top Dog. But before we get going, a quick word from today's sponsor, Hyundai. Today's video is sponsored by the all new Hyundai Palisade. Nothing like the hometown charm of a county fair. So charming. Oh, you say so. What was that? Nothing. Wow. Next. Do you have anything that's healthy? <laughs> that way. Fun, that way. That was actually fun. When can we go back? We have to wait a whole year, darn it. When it comes to comfort, we're thinking of every mile. The new Hyundai Palisade. It's your journey. If you want to learn more about the Hyundai Palisade, check out HyundaiUSA.com. And again, big thank you to Hyundai. All right, back to the content. Okay, Jade Rabbit, the story. After 150 RPM scout rifles got a hella fresh damage buff, which we first heard about in the June 30th TWAB, Jade Rabbit became more popular in PvP. Then, during the July 29th weekend of trials, Jade skyrocketed to the most used weapon overall, with over 3 million kills in the playlist. Granted, I'm sure part of that was due to the map being Eternity. Fairly large, wide open, with clear lanes of sight. But still, so why the hell is Jade Rabbit so popular? If you're unfamiliar and haven't jumped on the scout rifle train yet, I'll go ahead and show you the numbers. For any 150 RPM scout rifle, the damage numbers are as follows. About 43 damage on a body shot and 74 damage on a headshot. That means anyone in game will get destroyed by a three tap headshot from Jade Rabbit or any other 150 RPM scout rifle with a whopping 222 damage. You potentially though can kill other players with one body shot and two headshots if their Razil is low enough. After some quick private match shooting, we found that you need to be at five Razil or higher in order to live through a one body and two headshot combo from any 150 RPM scout rifle. Being at four Razil or lower will get you killed. However, that's going to be rare in the current meta. Ever since Bungie made it so that your Razil is inherently tied to less incoming flinch on whatever weapon you're holding, players have been really pumping up their Razil in PvP. I'd go on the record and say I'm probably never going into trials with the Razil under five at the current moment. Usually I'm legit hovering around a minimum of seven, but more frequently around eight, nine, or even 10. I just really hate being flinched. Titan mains especially pretty much have zero reason to not run high Razil in PVP all the time. Less weapon flinch overall and more opportunities to spam barricades, which is one of their strongest things to take advantage of in game at the moment. I'd probably go as far as to say that if you bump into anyone in PVP running for Razil or lower, they maybe deserve to get bopped by the one body to head combo, but that's none of my business. Anyway, here's one of the things that Jade Rabbit brings to the table that makes it a little bit more unique. The exotic perk, Fate of All Fools. Chain body shots to gain bonus damage on your next precision shot and return ammo to the mag. Here's where things start to get stupid. In a perfect world, here's what happens. After hitting one body shot, one of your following headshots will jump up from 74 to 79 damage, giving you 196 damage total. With just one powered up Jade headshot, you are now able to one body shot to headshot kill anyone at seven Brazil and below. Anyone with eight or higher will live. Now, I say in a perfect world because I've learned that very frequently the exotic perk will not proc at all. Even with doing the exact same shooting combo as before, body, head, head, in that order, the extra damage may just not happen and you'll get the regular 43, 74, 74. And for the love of God, before you run down to the combat section and tell me that, oh, the reason I'm not getting the extra damage damage number is blah, 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 blah. spare me before you come at me with your theories which on god i actually would love to one day learn the official reason why the perk is bugged i don't want to hear it unless you show me an unedited clip from a private lobby where you got the extra damage perk to kick in 20 times in a row with no mistakes and i'm not trying to sound like a salty bastard but believe me after all the replies i've gotten on twitter over the past week we've tried everything we tried shooting as fast as possible we tried shooting very very 
slow. We tried shooting from very far away. We tried shooting from very close. We tried shooting with a half empty mag. We tried shooting certain areas of the Guardian's physical body. We tried shooting head, body, head. And every time, every time, the results were a mixed bag. Sometimes we were able to get the extra damage perk to proc. Other times we just weren't. Other times, even though the damage number on screen indicated 74, it was clearly actually 79 because my testing buddy died to the combo. And before you say, oh, well, that just probably means it works all the time, but it sometimes just shows the number incorrectly. Nope to that, because after dying to a 43-74-74 combo, he would respawn. And without changing his Brazil, we would do another 43-74-74 and he would live. So after spending way, way, way too long testing this, we came to a very sound and logical conclusion on Jade Rabbit. Shit's f the exotic perk is a random bag of head assery, and sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. It's bugged, janked, effed up, and I'm not quite really sure why. But then again, the why doesn't really matter to me as much right now. Just the knowledge that sometimes I could get extra damage, but I shouldn't 100% rely on it all the time is the general takeaway. However, there's really, 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 really good news. The extra damage headshot isn't the best part about the Jade Rabbit. In fact, because very high resil is the meta right now, it almost doesn't matter matter. The best part about the Jade Rabbit is, drumroll please, the aim assist and the stability. The numbers behind Jade Rabbit are so good, it's kind of insane. The fact of the matter is, for players with even moderately good aim, if you're trying to go for a headshot, odds are you're going to get a headshot. Here's me deliberately trying to shoot my buddy in the breadbasket from downtown, and the game gives me a headshot on that placement, good lord. Jade Rabbit is sitting on 80 aim assist and 80 stability when fully cranked up with the exotic catalyst. Because stability is now also tied to unflinching, the bottom line is a gun that is a headshot machine. Just to give you an idea of how good Jade's aim assist is, here's a list of other 150 RPM scout rifles and their corresponding base aim assist values. Guiding Sight, 30. Talons of the Eagle, 30. Transfiguration, 29. Percy's D, 36. Pointed Inquiry, 28. And The Scholar, 32. Again, Jade Rabbit, 80. That's really high and it's no wonder the weapon feels so good. I wanted to try out other 150 RPM scout rifles to see how they stacked up to Jade, and as an example, I whipped out Ye Old Polaris Lance, and don't bring up that video, by the way, so help me. While a fun weapon overall with the ability to cause explosions and burn damage, Polaris felt just plain bad when compared to how unreal sticky the Jade Rabbit is. It's hard to describe, but getting headshots with Jade Rabbit was just so forgiving, whereas with Polaris, if I was off by even a little bit, it would be a big whiff. I really wanna like Polaris, the utility of how it works when paired together with Solar 3.0, just really fun. I'd probably recommend recommend it over Jade if you have perfect, ungodly ZK mushroom level aim, but for easy mode headshot getting, it's Jade all day. I know it's not a 150 RPM scout, but I want to talk about the former coolest kid on the block who's now dealing with being replaced by a hot new contender. I'm talking about Dead Man's Tail, aka the Steve Harrington of Destiny 2. A once goaded exotic scout pick, it's now fallen back on the depth chart in favor of Jade. But Dead Man brings a lot to the table that newer players shouldn't sleep on, mainly hip fire. While you do shoot faster with DMT while hip firing still doesn't match the rate of fire speed of Jade Rabbit. But having your hip fire accuracy penalties go bye bye on DMT is pretty awesome and it makes the gun way more easy to maneuver at mid to close range. And yeah, you can still put people down at mid to close range with Jade Rabbit. It's just trickier to do overall than with DMT. DMT also has access to random rolled perks, which can be pretty entertaining. Most people I know in PvP I've talked to rock Vorpal Weapon on their DMT. Now that primary weapons get a 20% damage buff, via Vorpal Weapon, it's more effective than ever at quickly punching holes in roaming supers. Another nice thing about DMT is that exotic perk Cranial Spike is awesome for PvP. It's like Rampage, except you only need to land headshots in order to ramp up the damage, not actually get a kill. If you're asking me, I'm probably going to play Dead Man if I happen to be playing on mouse and keyboard that day, and if I'm playing controller, I'll probably go with Jade Rabbit. Not to say that Jade isn't good on M&K, it is, but the Jade Sticky Factor to me feels great on controller. 
controller. One more scout I want to bring up, believe it or not, Skyburner's Oath. Yeah, a gun I have heavily memed on in the past. I'm here to actually talk about it for real real. Skyburner is also a 150 RPM scout rifle, and you may have noticed that Skyburner is sitting atop an aim assist value of 90, 10 higher than our already very high Jade Rabbit. Skyburner also has the ability to apply Scorch directly via hip fire, so why isn't the gun lighting up the top 10 trials most used weapons every week? After playing a bunch of games with it, I think I have the answer for me. It's the zoom. Just in the same way that a lot of PvP sniper mains prefer snipers with low zoom, I think I find it easier to land shots with a lower zoom on a scout rifle. Jade Rabbit's zoom is 20 and Skyburner's oath is 21. Might sound weird, but I'm telling you when you ADS and shoot with Skyburner, it feels a little too zeroed in. It doesn't feel as good as Jade Rabbit does. That being said, if the extra zoom on Skyburner doesn't bother you or affect your ability to land headshots, then you could, in theory, smoke people way harder than you ever did with Jade using Skyburner. More aim assist, more utility with Solar 3.0, way more handling, and double the mag. The extra zoom didn't do it for me, but again, y'all might be different. Bottom line is that 150 RPM scout rifles are hot right now, and if you haven't given them a try yet, you probably should. Jade should be your go-to if you're trying them out for the first time. Remember, go for a triple headshot, and if your aim is off, you could still get the kill anyway with two head, one body, provided the damn extra damage perk actually decides to kick in and work. I'd love to eventually figure out how the perk is broken. Ring the notification bell. If I ever do, I'll let you know. Amuse me, though, by going to the comment section and telling me your theory on why the exotic perk sometimes doesn't work. Anyway, I can only imagine that if Jade keeps dunking on the primary competition as hard as it has been, it'll inevitably get a rework either in the form of less aim assist or more zoom. Let me know what you think about scout rifles in PvP down in the comment section and tell me your current favorite and why. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on stream.